Okay, so welcome everybody to the asynchronous communication with Slido webinar. We are very happy to have you today. And this is our agenda. So first of all, we will start with the why we're here. Why do we work asynchronously? What is it anyways? And then we will show you in a very hands-on demo how you can use Slido asynchronously. Andrew is going to show us how to set everything up. And lastly, we are going to translate the how-to from Slido into actual use cases that you will be able to utilize in your work, like everyday work. And we will have a live Q&A at the end. Today, we have timed this webinar for about 45 minutes. So it's going to be a short and snappy one. If at any point you feel like this is all going way too fast for you, um, we apologize. We try to keep it uh, humane, but also don't worry about it because there is going to be a recording. Okay. So now that we have seen our plan, we would like to know what you expected from us or what you are expecting. So could you please, in keywords, this is a word cloud, let us know what would you like to take out of today's session? Why did you sign up? What do you want to learn? Very nice. I love that the first one was asynchronous success. What else would you want to learn here anyways? Straight to the top, straight yep. for success. Love it. Okay. So there is somebody who posted how to use Slido in presentations. I am new to Slido. Uh, quick disclaimer here. This is not a Slido basics webinar, and we are not going to showcase how to use Slido for Google Slides or PowerPoint, but we do have those resources on our website and on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have lots of webinars recordings. So um, I trust that my colleagues will post the respective links in the chat for you. But for today, we are going to focus on asynchronous usage of Slido exclusively. Okay, what else do we have in there, people? We have success rising up. People are liking this idea of success. We have use cases, neat tricks, make work fun. Yeah, we can help with that. Great. So let's get started. Okay, so who's with you today? Um, we're all from Slido, surprise, surprise. My name is Sabine, I'm the education manager and I'm joined today by two fantastic colleagues of mine. Uh, we have Andrew in the house. Hello. And Lisa. Hello. <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, as we already mentioned, no need to take notes. You don't need to worry that you're going to miss out on anything because you are going to receive um, an output email in the next few working days. So we are recording the session. You will get the slide deck all good. Just kick back, relax, enjoy the show. Okay, uh, before we get into the, um, the nitty gritty, what is asynchronous communication for you? It's a big term. It's a buzzword at the moment. Everybody's just throwing it around. But what is it? What do you think? Two-way engagement. Interesting. Yeah. Doesn't require an immediate answer. I love that. So refreshing, right? Preliminary content. Maximum mm -hmm. response time. Mm -hmm. There's ha, some not there live. That's a good one. No real time. Yeah. Offline engagement. We have Good. a lot of not in real times coming up. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think Lisa, you can work with this, right? I do. <laughs> Perfect. self paced well then, thank you so much. And, uh, let's get started. You already gave us the perfect jumping off point for why we work asynchronously. Perfect. Thank you, Sabina. So before we want to look, um, before we have a look, what asynchronous work really means, let's have a quick look at the reasons why we work asynchronously. So this is how our new normal work life looks like. 50% um, of all our meetings are hybrid and will most likely stay hybrid as well. One of the reasons for that is that a lot of teams are globally distributed, so they work from different time zones, just as you have mentioned already in the poll we just showed. 
Um, we also see an increasing number of working parents, uh, freelancers, part-timers, who are obviously not able to join all the meetings at the same time. So they will likely consume the content uh, afterwards to catch up. Um, this transition to these new working models obviously require a lot of flexibility and autonomy, which is also what people really value. Plus, organizations put a lot of importance on including everyone in the discussion. So all of this uh, calls for asynchronous work. Let's have a look what it really means. So asynchronous communication is when people collaborate and communicate, but they don't do so at the same time. So while meetings, calls, events, conferences, they all happen in real time, so in synchronicity, asynchronous communication is when people share and consume information at a time whenever it suits them. Now that you know what asynchronous communication really means, let us know if you think you are already working asynchronously. Let's see. Perfect. That's what we thought. Oh. And of course you do. Just because it's a fancy buzz buzzword now doesn't mean you haven't already done it. Cool. Nice. Got more than 60 votes in. We have a few people saying not really. So maybe after today we'll inspire you and you'll be working asynchronously more. Yep. Cool. So you can see there's a lot of people who actually already tried it um, or using it. So Slido offers a lot of ways um, to support asynchronous work or also improve how you work asynchronously. So um, here are a few examples that we think are super valuable for working asynchronously. So with polls, ideas, Q&A, you can crowdsource thoughts and opinions way ahead of the meeting, um, but also obviously after the meeting. Um, Slido gives also teams the opportunity to collaborate in a safe space, meaning that you can pose questions anonymously, for example. And Slido will also help you to stay flexible and efficient by gaining insights um, quickly, checking progress at scale, or replying to Q&A ahead of the meeting. So now, Andrew will show us how to put all of this in action. Yes, I will. You'll be in the hands of me for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Hope that's okay with everyone. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little demo of Slido and how it can apply to this asynchronous life that we find ourselves in. Before we do that, Based on your knowledge and your usage of Slido, whoa, we have a 10 straight in. Uh, but please be honest here, thinking of Slido the way that you use it, maybe you don't have that much of a knowledge of how it can be used asynchronously. If that's the case, then feel free to vote for a two or a three, go down in the lower section there. But let's just see what everyone thinks. Maybe you have actually been sending out Slido polls, Slido events to people not during live meetings or live events already. It looks like some people already have a good idea, but it does, others it? don't. Ah, we got a few ones. Thank you so there much. There we go. There we go. It's a good spread though. Um, and it's nice to see maybe that people are already using Slido in this way, thinking of different creative ways to use it outside of live engagement and meetings that are happening there and then not in real time as we said in one of our slido polls uh, so that's perfect um let's go over to our demo now that we've seen that mixed spread of votes and i'll show you my own tips and tricks all right so here is the slido event that we already have prepared and we're going to build some content within this and then I'm actually going to share the link with you as well so you can see how everything looks uh, while I'm sharing it on my screen as well. Um, so starting here, this is just a blank event. We maybe want to build some polls. I'm going to go for our ranking poll, which is something we haven't seen yet. And I'm going to ask a question to you as I'm going to be sending you this link. So 
ranking in order the features of Slido. Maybe you already have used them or you're going to try them asynchronously. So would it be polls? Would it be the Q and A or would it be the quiz? And I'm just going to save that and that's ready for us to go. It's not active yet. In this scenario, we haven't sent anyone the link yet. I'm just going to keep uh, building interactions uh, to prepare. So maybe you want to have a survey that you're sending to people. In this instance or this example, I'm going to build a survey by going here on our create poll menu and clicking on survey. If you're familiar with Slido, you'll know a survey is a combination of lots of different polls that can be active all at once. So let's do something around your company culture or checking in with your employees perhaps. So we can pick any poll type we want. Let's start with a word cloud. And we will ask, describe your working month in one word. So you can check in with people, see how they're getting on, if it's generally positive or negative. Then we can add another poll as part of the survey. And this can be a rating poll. And we're gonna say, I have a good work-life balance. How much do you agree with this statement? So one not being good at all. 10 being very good, so we'll make that 10 stars. And let's add one more open text question so people can add any further comments that they would want to. Uh, what you could even do as well is have another open text if you want the option for people to leave their name. And none of these polls are mandatory. So if you would like, there we go. So I'm gonna save that survey with those four questions within it. It's right here. It's ready to go once we need it. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna show and uh, use as an example for um, asynchronous slidoing is gonna be a quiz. And this can just be for something a little bit fun. So if we create the poll and go to quiz, maybe you wanna foster a little bit of culture within your workplace, especially if you're working remotely and uh, you might wanna have um, some kind of fun trivia questions. And we have a very useful feature for that, which is our random quiz question generator. What a fun question, something about programming language. I'm sure depending on your company, your employees might love that. Uh, let's add another one here. We'll have a three question quiz and okay. A nice movie one getting into some pop culture and Einstein classic. You can't go wrong. So we have our three question quiz created with the random quiz question generator. And this can be something that you can share with people and yeah, have a good time with. So we have our polls here. The Q&A is here. We can set that up the way we want it. I'm gonna turn the moderation on. So any questions that come through, I can approve or dismiss. And we wanna get the link for this specific Slido. Obviously people can join it by going to slido.com and typing in your event code, or you can send them the direct link. So if I go into the settings here and get this event link, what I'll do is I'm gonna share this with you into the chat. So, the link is there. I'm just gonna say demo link so we know which one it is. And you can click that. So I have it, I'm gonna activate this first poll so that when we go to the link, which is right over here, the poll is showing. So this, again, it's something you can share with people at any time and they could fill this in at their own time, at their own pace um, and let you know, and you can come back to that and check it. So I can put in my options and then make sure you're hitting send to send your answer. And there we go. Our Q&A is right here. So we can have questions. I see someone snuck in a question just before I got the moderation on, very nicely done. Uh, I can type in a question here, um, a test question, just so we can see. You can add the name or be anonymous. Oh, name is required, I guess. I've got that on in the settings. We'll have a look at that in the, a second. So there we go. We can ask the question and of course, Everything you can see, all your results will come in here for the poll. All of your questions will come in like this. So let's go to our settings right here, back to this. And under the features, there's a couple of things you can do just to kind of make sure everything's running the way you want it to. So perhaps you only want to have a Q&A and you don't want any polls showing in this Slido event. We can simply toggle that off. And within our audience Q&A, let's make sure everything's set up. Obviously I was playing with this before and I toggled off the option to add anonymous questions. So let me turn that on. Uh, 
I already have it on so participants can reply. So that encourages more discourse and discussion between people. You're replying to other people's questions as well as the ability to upvote them and downvote them. Then we have the option to add labels to the question. So previously I put Lisa and Zabina here. So it can be people that you wanna post your question to or different departments, whatever it might be. You know, you could have this slider link as an open AMA throughout the month that people can go to and put in their questions. And if you wanna give people the power to add the labels themselves, then you would uncheck this little I and we would save that. So that means when I go to type my question, if I say question for Lisa, I can add the label and there we go. And now I can switch to anonymous because we've set it up that way within the features. So going back to here, uh, of course, we set up all our survey and our quiz. So we're going to go back to that. I'll turn on the polling feature. And maybe we want to actually send a direct link to the survey and not have it active within our Slido event. And you can do that with any poll type or survey, uh, not the quiz. We're gonna look at how you can use the quiz asynchronously in just a moment. But with a survey or with a poll, under the three dots here, you can grab a direct link to share that with your participants. So grabbing that link, and again, if you wanna see that, I'll post it into the chat. So survey link, and there it is. And if I actually post it in here, even though this survey isn't active in our Slido event, when you have the link, you can be taken right to the survey. You can put in your answers and your votes, and then you can hit send. So you can set up as many different polls and surveys as you want, even in just one Slido event like this, and send direct links to each one as you need people to answer on them. And I see some votes are coming in. So everything is here within Slido. All your analytics are here with the poll votes and you can export all of that. Really easy for you to manage. And with the audience Q&A, we can decide if the moderation is on or off. The questions can be approved or dismissed if you have the moderation. So one last look in our settings. You have everything here on the general info. So you can put the title, make sure you have the date set for the appropriate time that people will be joining or they might have trouble getting into the event. You have your event code here and that's another reminder of where to get your event link. Lastly, on the features, we can turn on our ideas, which is kind of a cross between the polls and the Q&A because you can upvote ideas, you can put in your own uh, brainstorming ideas that you might have and you can let people reply and these can be done anonymously or with a name. So if I save that, you'll see this little tab for ideas comes up here and I can create a new topic and maybe you're thinking about how your company can encourage adoption with your clients so you can create that and activate the topic. So again, if we grab that link for our event and we have a look at that, then the poll is active, so you can have that as well as the ideas, which are right here. And anyone can post any thoughts that they have. And once you do, there's one, create webinars, love it. Training videos for clients, send, and you can upvote these. Give me money. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, all right, and the last thing I wanna show you in the settings, um, there are options where you can set up authentication for people joining the event. So once they click on that link or join with the event code, you can ask for their name or their email address, and then you can export the join list of participants from your um, attendee list in your analytics within Slido. And if you want to maybe embed this Slido participant mode into your own website or into an event app, you can go to the integration section here. This is where you can get the link right there, copy the embed code to do that. And you can also put a live video embed directly into your Slido participant mode. So a couple of more extra things there. If you have any questions about these, please let us know. We'll have some time at the end. Maybe you'll see my face again, my lovely voice, and I'll be demoing that for you at the end if you wanna see anything. But for now, let's leave it there. Thank you. So I just heard that uh, this was relatively fast. Uh, we get it. Um,
please, if uh, you found that this was a little bit too fast, just look at the follow up email. We will re we will include the recording and we are also going to include some guides. So you will be able to discover everything at your own time. So asynchronously um, in a bit. So don't worry about that. OK, Andrew, thank you so much for the demo. Uh, maybe a few points that you want to give us regarding Slido before we move on. OK, and this can act as a little reminder if I did go through things a little bit fast there. Um, so a couple of things we were looking at and some pros of Slido is that you can obviously have the link to your Slido event, but also individual links to uh, polls and surveys that you can send to people. Then with our anonymous voting and the fact that you can ask a question anonymously, it gives people that feeling of safety and knowing that they can maybe ask something that they normally wouldn't. The Q&A can be moderated as we saw, so you can approve or dismiss questions as they're coming in, controlling which ones go live or not. And I mentioned the analytics where you can download all of your results and questions. The ideas feature is there for brainstorming. And yeah, you can embed the Slido participant mode into a website. And looking at some limitations that we have, well, we didn't actually go over the quiz. Um, maybe I should look over that at the moment, or should we wait till the end, or what do we think? I think we can do that at the end. Okay, perfect. So if you want to use a quiz asynchronously, and if you're interested in that, maybe let us know in the chat or in Slido. Um, you can only really have one question activated per day. If you're familiar with the Slido quizzes, uh, you'll know that you kind of have to manually click through those, showing the correct answers, and then going to the next question. So we do use a quiz a day in Slido, and we'll just have one question active for people to go to on the link. They can join with their name, answer the question, then the next day they'll see the correct answer and go forward to the next question. So it can be pretty nice. Um, polls cannot be activated within videos, so maybe you've seen certain training videos and there are polls there that are interactive. You can put a slide, a video into your Slido event from YouTube or Vimeo and have polls beside that within your Slido, but not within the video. And you're going to have to keep an eye on the Slido event if you're looking for new votes on polls or new questions that come in as there's nothing that notifies you uh, within Slido or by email, for example, about any new questions or votes that are coming in. And finally, Lots of ways to collaborate with the ideas and the Q&A, but we don't have any whiteboard functionality, which is something that people are curious about. So we don't have that. So there we are. Thank you. All right. So now that we are a little bit more familiar with our product um, when it comes to asynchronous work, we have prepared a few use cases for you. So how can you translate this into your work reality? Um, those use cases are mostly for um, the business context, but of course, if you're an educator, you can also try uh, using Slido with your students. And if you need resources for that, just let us know in the chat. We are happy to include them in the output email. All right, so let's have a look. Of course, you can always send a pre-meeting survey. If you would like to um, prepare a meeting ahead of time and you would like to engage with your colleagues before you meet live, you would like to check their expectation level or maybe their, their uh, pre-existing knowledge or anything else, then a pre-meeting survey is a good idea. And also, great benefit, um, if you ask people beforehand what they would like to know or what they, what they would like to discuss, it actually gives you a chance to make the meeting more relevant and to tailor the content to the needs of the people attending. So that is a good case practice that we can give you for asynchronous work. And here we have an example survey. Uh, Andrew also just showed us how to create a survey. So uh, here you can see three simple questions. People can fill that out, you can check it, it before the meeting and you're good to go. Next example, we saw that also live, um, how to open the Q&A in advance. Opening the Q&A in advance is great when you have, for example, all hands meetings or big department meetings coming up and you would like to give everybody the chance to leave their question regardless of whether they can attend the live event or not. That is another uh, good case practice from Slido Reality. We have a team that is internationally dispersed and we try to have our, um, our all hands meetings 
time zone friendly for different time zones so we change the timings but there's always somebody who won't be able to attend live that is why we always 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 open the q a like a week before the actual event so that people can leave their questions everybody has equal access and you will have less double questions because people can upvote within slido q a also if you would like to keep control of the questions you can just use moderated q a Okay, brainstorming before the meeting, we saw the ideas feature, which, which can be turned on through settings and feature. Don't worry, we will include a guide. And um, this is great if you would like to enable an exchange between colleagues and if you would like to get the brains flowing and going before the meeting, as opposed to in the meeting when nobody has prepared as usual and you're like, ah, this is going to be difficult. Why not try to already start that in advance? Um, questions and resources can be posted there too. And uh, this can be anonymous or with names. So again, safe environment. Now, we are sure that at least some of us have been in that situation where you found yourself in a meeting and there was something to discuss and decide and it took forever to get there. And quite possibly you didn't even get there. Maybe you would like to share with us how many times that happened. So you have uh, too many times, sometimes, or maybe somebody's very lucky and never experienced that. That would be nice. That would be great, right? Okay. So far, the, the emoji that looks a bit woozy is in the lead with too many times. Okay, yeah, so we so we figured that um, that's work life, right? We've been there too. We might have something for you that is helpful. So, um, of course, you can also use this in a live meeting, but imagine this. Um, so you were discussing project proposals or priorities and you managed to gather them in the meeting, but then time was running out and people were starving for lunch and everybody wanted to leave. So what do you do with the decision that still needs to be made? Instead of calling another meeting and having another lengthy discussion, why don't you make a poll out of it? So you take all of the decision-making items you could, for example, have them in a multiple choice poll and let people vote for their favorite option. Or if this is something that needs to be prioritized, you can use the ranking poll like we see here in the screenshot and you can have people rank their priorities. And that way you can resolve your, the conversation and potentially the problem a lot faster. Uh, this is going to increase transparency. Everybody just has one vote. And if you take the decision outside of the meeting, people can make up their own minds and they are less influenced or less biased maybe by what is immediately talked about or who is the loudest possibly in the conversation. So this might give you a little bit of a, you know, more democratic and faster result. Okay, then one quiz question a day. We already uh, saw or we already heard from Andrew that it is possible to have one quiz question because you need to activate them manually and you can't activate more than one quiz question uh, if you're not in a live setting, but you could use the one quiz question per day. How could you use that? For example, um, for fun stuff or trivia stuff um, as sort of a team building activity or if you have a team that needs to keep up with a lot of information and knowledge, you could actually also include facts. And that way uh, you have an, like a gamification uh, in that, and it's uh, not just you know learning facts, but also a little bit of fun. You can keep track of the scores and you can make the content stick. And lastly, the classic, the post-meeting survey, the post-project survey, the post-conference, the post-whatever survey, Whatever you need, you just combine uh, several questions in a survey. Andrew showed us how that works. You can collect anonymous insights from your colleagues and you can improve with feedback. Fantastic. Okay, so before we jump into Q&A, we still have a few minutes for you. How are you going to use Slido asynchronously? What do you think now that you heard a few examples, you saw how it works, where would you like to use it in your own work context? And I'll wait a little bit until we have a few more votes. Maybe Andrew and Lisa can share their personal favorites of a synchronous Slido. Well, the thing that I forgot to demo, which was the quiz, was the thing that blew my mind recently when we used that in Slido, because I didn't know 
that it could be done that way. So I was very impressed by that. Um, but I love sharing a link to directly to a poll as well, because it's just a very clean way of getting people to vote on something. They're not distracted by being in a Slido event with Q and A and everything. You're just sending them directly to the poll. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how our participants of today think about it. So pre-meeting info for surveys, surveys, remote classroom, QR code for poll. Um, somebody didn't think about Q and A before, but now you do. Great. Fun polls, Q and A between different lectures, engagement survey, pre-meeting questions, ah, decision ranking, brainstorming. Q and A to begin with. I'm a new user. Yes, try the Q and A. Maybe a fun quiz. Great. In oh my, that's my favorite. In support of that meeting could have been an email. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we want to avoid that. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. In bigger team meetings, lectures. Perfect. So looks like you have a pretty good idea. Next town hall. Yes, use that next town hall. OK, cool. So with that, we still have at least 10 minutes. Let's go to Q&A. Let's go to Q&A. Ah, OK. Um, so should we focus on asynchronous questions first? That is a good yeah. asynchronous question. So here we're having somebody who has a hard time with using surveys after the live sessions. How do they get to get people to participate after a live session with a survey? What is our trick for that? I mean, not so much a trick as just giving people many different ways that they can, um, many different ways and many different reminders about the survey. So posting that in the right channels. A lot of the time when we ask for feedback at the end of our sessions, whether it's a webinar or a training call, we'll even activate that survey there and then, which isn't very asynchronous, I know, but then we'll send out the link to that after. Um, so make sure it's visible for people. Uh, make sure you're giving gentle reminders. Those are the only tips that I have, but I, I see that they work. So, yeah. Yeah. So when you are um, using it in a live session, make sure that you activate the feedback survey a few minutes before the end. We just did we that have. in this call as well. <laughs> exactly. Because um, that is actually the best way while the people are still there. And, and when you we have in the comments, Michelle is saying provide a need by date, which is good. Put the pressure on. I like that. That's a that's a great call. So um, use accountability. Make sure that people understand why it is useful, why they should vote, um, and that you are actually using the insights that you're getting in the future, so that they can see there is value in their participation. Okay, great. So that is, I think, a style question. Is it better to use surveys versus one question at a time? I think it is a style question. It totally depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're just wanting to know one specific uh, piece of information or get the votes on one topic from people, then one poll is going to do the job. The difference with the survey and the benefit of it is if you want to ask more than one question, you can then put all of those different poll types into one. And when you activate it, it will be there. So you can see the survey that we have with three different polls in it. And it's like a little feedback form that you can go through and answer. So it's as simple as that really. One question, if it simply is one question. And if you need to ask more at that time, put it into your survey. Yes. Okay. This is a very good one for everybody who is sharing um, and updating at the same time. So if you add an ad hoc question to your Slido, I will translate this as if you add spontaneously another another poll to your Slido, will people who receive the link ahead of time be able to see the new question? I think there are two scenarios. So one scenario is we added a poll. And the other scenario is we added a question to Q&A. Maybe Andrew, could you take one of the scenarios, whichever you want? <laughs> Yeah, so if we're talking about the poll and you're adding a poll to Slido, 
I mean, in either scenario, it it should be fine because if you sent the link ahead of time, uh, then it's going to be there if you activate a poll or if people put in new Q&A questions. And then if you're using that same Slido within your meeting, again, it's all going to be there. Um, so Slido can be used asynchronously and you can use that Slido event that you were using asynchronously on offline time. And you can bring that to your online meeting as well. Um, so for example, you know, we'll probably send a link to the survey or to this event, maybe in a follow-up, and it will be the exact same Slido that is connected to this WebEx webinar today. Yes, um, just make sure that you remember there are no notifications for nobody. So whether there is a new question in Q&A that somebody posted as a participant or whether uh, you added an, a new poll, um, nobody's going to know about that unless you let them know. That's a good point. Yeah, always share the Slido present mode as we're doing here if you can to make it visible. Say I'm activating a poll. If you got the link for Slido, please join again or join in another way. Yeah, make it very clear. Okay. So we have time for probably two more. Let me see if we have some more asynchronous. That is a great asynchronous question. Oopa. Where did oh, you I'll, go? Yep. I'll get it back. What did, what happened? I think it was ticked, so let me put that back. Yes, please. It was put in the archive. So favorite techniques for using yes. Slido as part of replacing meetings with, okay. Oh, Let, where did let's it go? Not, yes. There we are. Um, okay. Yes, the classic could have been an email uh, replacing with messages or pre-recorded videos. Sabina, I'm going to pass it to you if you have any inspo yes. for this one. Let me think about it for one second. Yes. So what I like to do by now is I have started to design asynchronous work processes. So instead of um, trying to get people together and be like, um, and can we talk about this? And can we talk about that? I decide which question or which item actually needs people's input and a live discussion versus what is okay to do asynchronously where are just chat messages um, okay too and what is sort of an easy thing and then i send out surveys and questions accordingly so for example um, we had a webinar last year where we had three potential titles and i didn't want to have a lengthy discussion in a live meeting so what i did is i created a poll i put those three potential titles in there and i asked people to vote for their favorite and boom half an hour later Later, I mean, I was lucky it was fast, but half an hour later, we had a new webinar title. Um, that's a great example. And also, as already was shared by somebody in the chat, always, always with a deadline and very, very clear instructions. Yeah, I think that that's uh, one of my favorites. Does anybody have anything to add to this one? Very nice. I thought you handled that beautifully. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, other things that we do is um, we do brainstormings before big sessions where we talk about new topics. We do uh, send out pre-meeting surveys. We also do send out pre-project surveys. For example, we are doing that with our team right now. We are uh, planning a content audit. So we asked um, several teams, what is the content that they would like to look us to look at? What are things that they would like us to update, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of just having individual talks, we put everything together in one survey. We shared the survey across the departments that are uh, in touch with customer facing materials. And this is how we are getting the insights for our project. Very time efficient and uh, saves us a lot of hours on calls. Yeah, and we always share a Slido event before our all hands on our big company meetings so people can put in their questions, upload the questions of others. And yeah, that's a good way to do it as well. Okay. So we have that. Um, we are almost out of time. So let me see if there's one more asynchronous question. We are going to address um, extra content. So for example, the question that we see down here, um, how to get to poll results, we are going to include a guide on that in the output presentation. So don't worry about this. And um, what else do we have? We do have this question. I'm just gonna grab. Thank you, Matthew, mm -hmm. and for putting your name there. 
event seems like a per term for a tool that is useful for sync and async. I agree. Is Slido thinking about updating the term used within the Slido environment? Yes, Slido is thinking of doing that. That is the discussion that we've had for quite some time. And we find the terminology event can be confusing as well because people think, you know, that's a live event, like your actual meeting itself, not the Slido event that can be attached onto that. So absolutely. And as we're navigating, you know, the more hybrid life and the asynchronous working that everyone is getting into, uh, we want to make the terminology clearer. So we're definitely reviewing event and sometime in the near future, I would say that won't be there. <laughs> yes. And with that, our time is up. Thank you so much. We are going to address the rest of the questions in writing and we will send the Q&A link in the follow-up email as well as um, the more materials that you requested, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, it's time to say goodbye already. Thank you so much. And leave us your feedback. Very important. Leave us your feedback. Yeah, we already have a few votes in there. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Have a great day.